Ask not what Cartoonist Kayfabe can do for you. Ask what you can do for Cartoonist Kayfabe. And somebody sent us a 50-pound book. <laughs> the art of uh, G.I. Joe. It's all the package artwork, all the box art, beautiful paintings by people like Errol Norum, Dave Dorman. Uh, all sorts of heavy hitters are in here. Ron Rudat, character designs and things. Wait till you check this thing out. Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. The Art of G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, Omnibus Edition by R. Carson Metaxas. And Chad H., we're going to call him, man, is under the microscope today. I want to remind you guys that we are a daily YouTube channel with more than 1,700 videos out there. Good chance we might have talked about some of your favorites. So make sure you uh, hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Kayfabe channel. Give the channel a search. Check out those videos. We've done extensive G.I. Joe coverage uh, over the years, man. So check out those episodes at the, at the very least. Uh, we are on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and uh, we encourage you to subscribe, hit the bell, hit whatever buttons are required for you to get the videos delivered to you early, because like uh, like this book here, which will be kayfabe affected, people are going to go run out and go buy this book. Can't imagine that there's too many of these 50, 60 pound books out there that were published by, you know, two two fellas. I, I can't imagine there's too many of them out there. So uh, hit like, subscribe, all of that. Uh, if you want an even bigger jump on uh, the videos that we make and the books that we present to our audience, you got to become a King K Faber on our Patreon and you will get the videos before anybody else. Plus, you will be getting uh, the option to check out our live stream recording sessions, which we've had a 15 minute conversation with the with the audience, with the Kings uh, already. Uh, without further ado, Jimmy, this came through the mail from a K Faber. Can't can't put the dude's name out there because he didn't uh, give us that permission. Thank you so much for us for sending this our way. Comes comes put in side of like a uh, like a like an ammo case. Yeah, Fort Knox or something, man. It's it's a it's a pretty cool package. Um, they did a I guess they did a Kickstarter to to fund this thing, and something tells me they hit some stretch ghouls. <laughs> what's very funny though is like the guys who uh who edited this thing they really like cesspool they i think they must be from from my era the, the whoever did this man because cesspool this is you don't know cesspool i that, don't that know comes, cesspool that comes later man that's not the uh that's not the um nowhere to run nowhere to hide gi joe that's the got to get tough gi joe comes away later but uh that's the box that the shit comes in and packaged with that is a set of prints that is pretty cool. And then you see like the backers choices. So the backers got to choose the guys they see. And dude, this, this is so perfect. Cause like as, as a, the audience, right, it's fanboys. So of course they're going to do a snake eyes. Like, like this is all the fanboy stuff. And then the editor's choice, that would be like us. So it's the weird deep cut dudes. And then of course there's your cesspool right there. I really like this idea. Yeah. You know, like I get mine and you get yours. Sure. This is fantastic. Best of all worlds. This is, this is the new world we live in where you get to make this stuff and you get to have a hand in it and you get to really do the best version of this stuff. Like look at everything that's been done and then make that choice. You yeah. know, everybody that makes one after this now has the option to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, these guys, clear fan, giant fans, right? So they wanted to do it right and they wanted to bring you the biggest presentation possible and uh, make the most comprehensive version uh, possible. I'm imagining that these are some higher level uh, backers, right? Showing off their, their G.I. Joe collection. Look at that. Is this boy a product of divorce? Yeah, isn't that always what this, this toy <laughs> indicates? You know what? If this is backers, again, I think that's a really great choice. Yeah. And it adds to this mystique. It kind of shows how G.I. Joe was this like generational toy and had a presence. I always wanted this, man. That's Snake Eyes 3. But the, 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 like they, they sold costumes and stuff. <laughs> Look how serious he is posing with his with his plane. <laughs> <laughs> and a little dude, a little badass uh, storm shadow. I love it. Buy our books. Keep the videos coming to you on a regular basis. Jimmy has Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, Street Angel Princess of Poverty, True Crime Funnies, 1986 Zine, BW Zine. Get those at his website. Hulk Grand Design Treasury is out there. Trade paperback coming soon. I have Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy, Red Room Crypto Killers comes out the end of February, Antisocial Network, 
Red Room trigger warnings, and the Switchblade Shorties comic strip coming to you online on a daily basis. Now that we're done uh, showing off our books, get them, and back to the video. So what this is, is a big giant book full of the production art, the great backs of, uh, of the blister packs, all of the little dossiers. They were such iconic designs, like that explosion background behind the figures really made the figures pop. Absolutely. You know, you wonder like who makes a decision like that because it was a great decision. Right, and they, they talk about like, at a certain level of, cre of, of collector, dudes are collecting this art, but they're also collecting what they call c uh, codochromes because there are multiple codochromes for various color for characters where they're playing with color yeah. and uh, trying, trying to figure that part out. And then it gets deeper, dude, because oh, like there's even like fold outs where it, they give little bios to guys like Ron Rudat, who did the bulk of the uh, designing of the figures, and they show the blueprints of schematics and how to make them. Rudat uh, drew a, um, a uh, like a picture book using the markers and stuff at, at disposal. So like in between doing the character designs, he actually like did a picture book, and they they have all the art for that in here, dude. Like that's the, his Destro, you know, before it got codified into what the the, the cartoon Destro was. But uh, that's what this book is, dude. This this is like... It crossed my mind. Like, man, I should just get all the, the toys again. Like, why not? You can find complete lots and stuff online. And it's like, yeah, I can afford it. But should I do that? This is all I need. There is so much of this channel that is rooted, obviously, in nostalgia. And it feels like this is a book that if you are a certain age... Like, I could see you on the floor you know, just just shaking with excitement of having this stuff going through your brain again. Right. Because when you're a kid of this age, like, I remember getting toys, and it's like you study the package. You know, I might be drawing the figures from the artwork. It's just, there wasn't a lot going on in 1982. Right. So this this kind of stuff certainly filled a lot of time, depending on your age. I love seeing the Ron Rudat artwork. Mm. That's amazing. You know, like like this kind of thing for, again, hitting those nostalgic buttons. This seems strong for that. Do you know what kind of... Uh, wow, they were like roughs and stuff. Look at those roughs. Oh, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Do you remember... Uh, do you know how much this made on Kickstarter? I feel like no. this ought to be like a million-dollar Kickstarter. Yeah, that's a good question, it's man. It's a giant property, and it's, this really is the sweet spot of the property. But you can see, like, no stone is unturned. Like, every piece of licensed memorabilia shows up in here. Like, anything that had an illustration, these are those, like, little um, digest, like, not blow digest, like, little square reprints of... Uh, Earl Norum, too, like, going out and getting some of these pop culture painters. It was, it was Marvel. Ooh, Mutt and Junkyard. And he's Mutt. That was the <laughs> joke, right? <laughs> It's so great that they pull all this different artwork because it allows for your layouts to vary right. as you go through. And I think that's important in a book like this. You know, if it was just this for 500 pages, I think that would get stale. Could be white noise. You know, it's it's the thing that has to be figured out with um, artist editions, right? Yes. Because people, you start to take, it, take for granted that you're looking at Dark Knight Returns after, you know, 50 pages. And it's like, nah, dude, you need to stay engaged. That's why I think the Otomo... Uh, Ganga book, like, really solved that. You remember they had the, the different levels of toys, too, depending on uh, econo economic stratum. Like, yeah, I had, like, like that. Five year, five dollar vehicles, like like this one. Yeah, although I like that. I like many of those, too, though. Right. To, to be fair. But I had, like, the four-wheeler that the I think the twins rode around on. Right. And that was one of those cheapo toys, little little ones. Yeah. Like, that. these the big ones were never... I had no hiss tank when I was a little dude. That's such a great, great one, too. It's so funny, too, because, like, this is all still before my time, really. Like, these ones, man. I, like, I obviously knew it, and I grew up with the cartoon, but, but it really is around the time of the movie. Like, these are the first conscious ones I remember buying, and I used to call them Examot. <laughs> Tomax and Examot. Because I couldn't, like, XA? How the fuck do you pronounce that? The Dreadnoughts were always so awesome. Yeah. You know, like having a chainsaw. Like that's a heck of a gun. little weapon right yes. there. And then this is when they really start to get, you know, over the top, which which is the dividing line. Like there are people who, who don't want this, and I'm like all about that. That's a great piece. Um, yeah. 
all of this stuff's really good, and I love that they footnote the stuff too with things like dates, right? Credits. Um, it's it very very useful. Because like I'm just three, so of course I shouldn't. But you know, we've seen so many of these books where like that's our critical note. Like, what am I looking at? Oh yeah, you know, totally. What's this from? So. I like whenever people get it right, because again, we have all a history at this point. Like you can see the mistakes and you can apply them to your book. Yeah, no, this is incredibly comprehensive. This is beautiful. The hydrofoil. You know, they must have kept some of these things on the shelf way longer than the year that they came out because I had the hydrofoil and I definitely was not three years old buying that. I remember being captivated by that. The tank that had like the bridge that would come out. Yeah. And then like discovering that there's a version of that in real life. Yeah. Blew my mind. Was that it? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that would be, this is what I had. That's a cool looking piece. Um, this is, this is, your, this is awful. If this is your toy, I feel bad for you. Yeah, yeah, That's you, the least fun you toy. Got, you got the pink lunch tickets. You got to get the free lunch at school. <laughs> That one should have been included as like a like a yeah like with a character the yeah yeah like there was a stalker figure like that that I got that had a white ca uh, kayak beachhead. That was interesting. There was like the figure case, and I feel like it's very. Uh, it may have been what they used for the case design. I think it was one right here. Oh yeah. You know that's it's that's that's, that's the sharp. same format of like yeah. four characters, four characters. Right. Which again, like that's brilliant. You know why wouldn't you reference this in your design? You know, it seems like a no-brainer, but again, until you see people do it. I was going to say, is that Ron Rudat? Oh, yeah, you'd have to put yourself on one of these. Right? Yeah, he does. I think he's, le I think, was that, was that Leatherneck? Um, I think his face is, is that, but like the Ron Rudat name is used. Uh, I think uh, Larry Hama is, is a tunnel rat. This also makes me think, I'm very curious now about like all of the, t of the toys of that era. Like, figuring out package designs for them. Sure. Because the packaging is so great on these. Great uh, videos on YouTube with this Bill Merkline dude talking about sculpting the figures and, and the bucks. And, like, there's, like, a base armature that you have, and then you put your Sculpey on top. Or, like, there was, like, a wax, and then you sculpt, sculpt your guys so that they all maintain that, like, three and a quarter yeah, right. inch height with the same... You know, you can put this guy in a Hiss tank if you want. Up, painting over paintings. Oh man! I was going to see if they were using the same faces. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> that, like eerie comic making techniques there. <laughs> Funny to see the artwork evolving too into like a, I don't know, a smoother, more airbrush. Right. Yeah, like this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's like a eight bit kind of explosion. Like take, running it through the uh, Nintendo or something. This is great. The schematics, you know. It's a toy, but it's like you still got to build those models. Totally. And it's just like a way different level of thinking. You need somebody with like architectural background or something. I remember in uh, preschool, we would have show and tell. And I remember somebody brought in a ser Serpentor and I was so jealous. <laughs> so what is that? Three, age three, four? That's a strong figure for preschool. Sergeant Slaughter is such an interesting inclusion, especially when you consider it's like he gives up WWF to do it. Right. And it's super wise, man, because uh, like we all freaking loved him. And then when he comes back into wrestling and he's a heel, it it felt like getting stabbed in the back. Yeah. Because also you had no context of, of uh, the time of these things. So he was the host of the show at the beginning of the got to get tough. Like when when it comes back, so he's hosting that while that shit is going on with um, the Iron Sheik and stuff, and it's just like, how are you good today? And you're 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 bad on WWF. Yeah, that had to be tough for kids. Man, I don't think this thing ever came out. You know what? I used to buy the these were some I bought those comics like yeah. early in my run. Those came out, and I used to like in humanoids. See, this is my this is this is the start of my era. And this would have been the Rocky figure, right? Yeah, exactly. Until, uh, until we until we didn't get the permission. No, no, this was the because he's Cobra. This uh, is the antagonist for Rocky. Okay. So like you have Rocky, so you got to have a boxing glove guy to, for Rocky to fight. I see. I, I'm on the record in our one Dave Cho episode. I love this because I wanted some civilian 
toys that that could have some stakes and or, or like be a victim or a, a hostage or something like that so chuckles unfortunately he was always a hostage he was always somebody that needed save because he's the most regular looking dude this is the only uh cobra commander that i had like it, it i oh, didn't wow. have those those earlier ones i just had the darth vader helmet and he was the main this is what cobra commander looked like on that like late period cartoon falcon they i swear to god jimmy i hope this ain't like some mandala effect shit they did like a heroin junkie episode where Falcon was a junkie. Keep, keep your eye on the chat and, and they'll tell they'll tell me if I'm telling lies, man. But uh, yeah, he was like on the horse. They they had some like DEA type drug enforcement sub, you know, category of toys. Crystal ball. That's a whole wild page of characters. I- and, and, and the Falcon kind of makes sense, except whenever you put him next to these three. Oh, wait till you see Raptor. I love this figure, man. <laughs> Chick Ninja, so good. You you and uh, Brian Michael Bendis. <laughs> there, there's your guy, yeah. man. How about that shit? Dude, that looks like a Marvel toy. It does. It a like lot a of Marvel these figure. have that, that superhero influence, it looks like. Oh, I'm seeing that's the dude. Yeah, that's supposed to be Larry Hama. Oh, see, this is what why the dude sent it back. Mm. And look at that, Mark Pennington. He's in comics. Uh, I remember this shit. Do you remember what this was? You 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 uh, get together your flag points, and you could send away. And this is you. So like they create like the little dossier, and like you choose all of your attributes and like what your weapons are and shit like that. And that's like that's genius. that's you as a GI Joe. Give, give them give them your address. Yes, sir, man. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a funny thing too is a compilation of how companies would go after everybody's addresses yeah <laughs> what were the incentives that all of us kids fell for this is the shit that's really gonna make the old the old school heads like real mad when you start to get into galobulus and stuff dude the they, this is i have no recollection of this i'm completely out 87 like, look at that that's shocking that's cool looking i, I kind of like that Vo- voiced by burgess meredith on the uh in the movie these are nice. It looks like fucking, um, it looks like Masters of the Universe toys. You wonder, I mean, I'm sure toy designers flip-flop around and new blood comes in, so could be. Or it was just, um, Mac, like, uh, capitalizing off of, uh... That could be, too. Some of that shit. Yeah, this is commercial art. Yeah. Boy, the poses I feel like are getting more heroic too. Mm. When you when you blow them up, you can really see how it's it's really like drawing with paint. Yes. Makes me wonder how big the originals are. Yeah, I bet you do. I bet you're about that size. Looks like these two are, well, next page. <laughs> like they're mating. Yeah, docking. That's, why, that's where docking comes from, man. Had that. I think this thing didn't sell because it was it was uh, on, on clearance. I had this. This one I would put in the, with the raft as being not a great. Right. Yeah, but it was sold as the figure. Like it, yeah. was, it was in the same section with the figure. So it was uh, one of those deals. It's so funny the ships or the toys that are like pretty lame. Like there was a little flatbed truck. Right. <laughs> or this, you know, like a radar station. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're maximizing like it was um the the Kenner Star Wars stuff would have these kind of like adjacent toys where I, they probably kit bashed old shit and just put it out with the Star Wars label. Yeah, completely. I remember seeing these things, man, and I wonder who who bought these shits. I bought one of those. Yeah. Did yeah, you, because I would have a couple I would have generic figures and uh, it was just like they seemed cool, especially if there were like guns and stuff in those. Right. Look at Chuckles looking the most heroic he ever did. Dude, and you can tell the eras, right? This is like Magnum PI, uh Miami Vice era. I like to imagine the artist being like, Yeah, send me to Hawaii for a week, I'll do some, some I'll paintings do my best. there. I feel like we haven't we've been seeing Road Pig show up in the and auxiliary stuff, but we haven't seen his his thing yet. Look, he, they're really pushing him. Yeah. I had Road Pig as a, as a figure. I had two different Road Pigs. Oh, the, I didn't the, know there the, were two different ones. Yeah, there's a very That's neon a funny, one that funny, comes later. Uh, let's see Sarge's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that jaw, dude. It's so good. 
What a synergy, synergy for both sides. Yeah. Doing that figure. I mean, that's it was such a good fit. Yeah, it makes so much sense. And he and he would be man. He must be in a dozen cartoons. Yeah, I think he was in that Serpentor, like the movie. Yeah, I had I had this. Yeah, it's it's. it's uh, a good, I think good push. I, I think it's his. The last bit of DNA that was required, like, comes from Sergeant Sutter. So it's like Genghis Khan and and uh, <laughs> Julius Caesar and like all like the worst dudes. And then like I think uh, Sergeant Slaughter gets a little of his DNA in him. That's hilarious. Oh, here we go. Look at that, man. That's I mean, how could you not buy that? So like, what's the era, dude? It's like Beyond Thunderdome. Right. And yeah. then and then like uh, 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 Crocodile Dundee. Dude, the range of weapons too as to like what people get is is weapons were a big thing for me, and I was I was looking at this one as being like that's that's amazing, awesome. <laughs> but it's so different from you know like some some people have nothing like uh, right. I always thought the ninja weapons were usually pretty weak. Sure, but that's pretty. Fun. This is like my favorite uh, Storm Shadow. That's amazing. Love that art. And and the fact that it's like it's just it's Bart Sears. Uh, it's just for presentation. You 86, know? too. It was never meant to be seen. He designed the cops toys, COPS. Yeah. Now, this is a blind spot for me. Like, like this should this felt generic. Because this was the era where there was a ton of generic. Uh, there was, like, Guts, and there was br Bronze Bombers, and all those other kind of, like, satellite Remco toys. And this felt generic. Like, I didn't buy any of these shits. It's going to be regular G.I. Joe's. As you flip through this, it's exhausting to me to think of, like, trying to assemble good quality images of all of this. Right. Yeah, no, these guys had full employment, dude. They had lots of work. And look at this, dude. They're taking old toys and just giving fresh coats of paint. How funny is that? I'm surprised it took this long to, uh, to get to that <laughs> stage. You know, it feels like classic toy making. This is probably all new territory, too, of, like, a toy that's running six years in and it's right. still... You're still being able to exploit it. So you guys get the picture, man. Like this is about as comprehensive as as, as we could get. Let's go. Let's go. Let's let's jump to the back. Yeah, it's a phenomenal package. This seeing this does make me like I want all kinds. Of, I I can't believe there's not a Transformers version. Oh, there of this. will be. There will um, be. But I want everything. I want all the comic stuff to be exhaustive like this. It's probably like the artist edition 2.0. I'm curious how far they take it up because, like, I remember this stuff, and and wow. there becomes, um, yeah, there will be like big, big monsters like these shits. Now I'm trying to figure out when does uh, Marvel get rid of the GI Joe license and Dark Horse take it over? This is '94. Th yeah, this Mar art. Marvel still Marvel still has this stuff, and uh, so like so Marvel has it through like the tenure, pretty much. I wonder who that line art was. Kurt Grone, somebody we don't know. Yeah, I don't know that name. Ninja Force. Definitely had these. In fact, that like... Battle core. The thing that sucks is these are the ones that I still have because <laughs> because they, they're they the newer ones, you know, that just didn't... Uh, in fact, when, when I was this a kid... This looks like, a, uh, like almost a life out. Right. <laughs> I, um, I have comics that I drew with this brand of like Shipwreck and Stalker and all these guys. This Major Blood... I really do have drawings of that. You know what? I'm going to go grab a rope. I, I know exactly where it is. So you see that major blood right there? And this is like a book full of my old drawings. Like you can see, I, I cribbed a, uh, that's a Silvestri Dazzler and Jim Lee Cyclops. I made a strong guy comic. But yeah, there's that major blood. This guy right there. <laughs> Eddie P. Drew 94. But like I, I did whole, whole comics is like I, there's my ship gray. Roadblock. I invented my own Lady J. This is what Beachhead looks like. We'll we'll see his toy in a second. And this is him like repairing a elevator cable. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I, I should be drawing GI Joe comics. Yeah, see, there's that. It's that. That's that Beachhead. Yeah, I was I was hoping that they would have this the Street Fighter 2 stuff in here. Just a very little bit. Super cool. Got to give shouts to the K Fabers who uh, the K Faber who sent this in to us. Uh it's a book that I don't think I would ever buy. I had no idea that it existed. I, I don't know much about 
the Kickstarters or, you know, I never pay attention to any of that kind of stuff. I'm in my own world. So when this thing showed up, it's amazing to me too, to think like a project of this scale, you know, these things come out like I had never heard of it either. Right. You know, just as a book, I feel like this is phenomenal. Yeah. I think uh, the site you go to, man, you go to, I think it's 3djoe.com or, or just 3djoe.com will get you there uh, so that you could scoop up your own omnibus hardcover edition of The Art of G.I. Joe. I do wonder if everybody's being honest, how difficult this book actually is to handle, you know, which I, I think I've encountered with quite a few of the large oversized books that I own where it's like... It's not the most fun. Like, you're not going to read it at night in bed. It's it's the most uncomfortable book that I've I've ever, ever experienced, ever. Because it, it opens wide, right? It's very heavy. So you can't even just have it on your lap. It has to have a dedicated table. But then when you have these pieces that open up three pages long. Right. Now I have to move my body to read it. Yes. You know, so so it is it is a functional problem, but it's actually very instructive to some stuff that I'm working on designing right now. And uh, what I came back with is it ain't going to be that wide as, yes. as wide as I as I thought it was going to be. Jimmy, if you're good, I'm good. Yes. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. And if you get anything out of these videos, if you dig what we produce. Make sure that you follow the channel and uh, it helps us out a lot. The videos are ultimately brought to you by the books that we make, but we have a Patreon and the Patreon is there for you to mitigate the kayfabe effect, become one of our biggest supporters, and you get all the videos before anybody else. You also uh, have access to the live stream recording session as we produce these videos. Link in the description below for uh, the, the Patreon. We have more than 1700 videos out there and we might have talked about some of your favorite comics. So make sure you hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Kayfabe YouTube channel. Check out the channel. Pop in your favorite titles. Check out those episodes. If we haven't talked about your favorite comics, then by all means, put something in the comments so that we can push those books a little bit higher on our uh, to-read piles. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Right now, I've been working on Switchblade Shorties, which is my daily comic strip. You can find it on all of our social media platforms, the kayfabe stuff, uh, my own personal uh, social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. There's a dedicated Switchblade Shorties Instagram, and it's also uh, on Webtoon in its uh, full archive. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is uh, is going quick, and uh, it is 45 bucks on Amazon at the moment. Uh, so scoop it up if you haven't. Uh, it's almost freaking half off, so you can't beat that with a stick. Best book I made to date. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy Trade Paperback contains all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, it's the one place where you can get it all inside of one handy-dandy cover. Red Room Crypto Killers is coming out at the end of February, part of a trilogy of trade paperbacks, uh, but you don't need to start with the first one because each contains four self-contained stories. So if you grab this first, Crypto Killers, then uh, at a later time, you could read the Anti-Social Network or Trigger Warnings. Jimmy, why don't you let the people know what's out there? I have Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, and Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, both available right now from Image Comics. These are also self-contained. Totally, one is black and white, one is full color. Uh, the Homeless Ninja on a Skateboard, perfect for the action comics or superhero comics fan in your life. The big news for me is the self-published comics, True Crime Funnies, the 1986 zine, and the BW zine, celebrating the 80s black and white explosion. These are self-published. You can get them on my website, jimrug.com, or my Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug. They've been out of print and unavailable. They will be back and available March 6th. So if you miss those, March 6th, you can pick those up. And Hulk Grand Design. This is a treasury-sized edition out of print. However, the trade paperback coming out in May this year, and that is available now for pre-order. So let Marvel know they need to keep these things in print by pre-ordering that one wherever you pre-order books. The books are the most important way to kind of keep things uh, on, on, the, on the tracks. But there are some direct ways to support Cartoonist Kayfabe. Jimmy, let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, support the channel, keep the vids rocking. Jimmy, give them final marching orders, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.